Hello, it's Greg Gerson Gaijin. We're back. We hope you're having a day where we're listening to this audio content from. As always, we'd like thank you for your continued support of Greg Gerson Gaijin social media and writing efforts. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This is episode 058 of the Greg Gerson Gaijin. Definitely not a podcast show. A light and fluffy look at social media, Japan, Japanese food, expat life, and life in general. As always, your retweets of this and all the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful content that we actively tweet and retweet out on Craig Hoffman 11 on Twitter is appreciated. Thank you in advance for helping us get the good, good, good word out about Gray, Grizzled, and Gaijin. Welcome back to another good show today, I hope. It's been a little while. Apologies. There's been a lot going on. Mostly, it's been busy around the old Ranchero, so I haven't really had a quiet time to record. And there's been a lot of events in my household that have demanded my attention. And as I've always said and firmly believe, my family comes first in that well above social media and content creation, to be sure. If that costs me fame and fortune, so be it. I'm okay with that. Also, I've been working on a play, doing a lot of writing, so my free time, limited that it is, I've been putting a full effort into that. Big shout out to author Bill Adler, who's been helping me look at that. When he has a chance, that's most appreciated. It's coming along. I studied music in college and graduate school, and I still know a fair number of actors and actresses and people who are active in the theater. And so, presumably, if my play, my finished product, doesn't stink the junk up too much, there'll be an opportunity to get that presented somewhere, hopefully in the very, very near future, next year or the year after, I hope. So there's that. Today I want to talk a little bit about the decline and disintegration of social skills in foreigners the longer they live abroad, and of course specifically here in Japan. I don't mean to throw other foreigners under a bus, and I know that that's kind of become part of the problem. I see a lot of social media, the foreigner did this, whether that's Japanese media, the bad foreigners, right? I also see a lot of foreigner on foreigner, oh, this foreigner did this, oh, this idiot foreigner. Somebody posted a video the other day of a rather troubled foreigner in a Starbucks. I'm not sure if that was actually legit or fake. It kind of just went away, but he flipped out in the video. That was amazing. Hope he's all right. And... So when I say these things, I'm not looking to like add and pile on to the plight of the poor, poor, poor foreigner living into Japan, nor do I wish to push forward any false narratives. And I've seen a lot of people going about the Japanese news and translating it into English and talking about issues here like sexism that really drive people to either side of the fence You know, to the point where people are like death threats and pictures of knives on Twitter. I'm not even joking. Greg Grissom and Gaijin does not do that. Craig has opinions on issues, but I choose to keep Greg Grizzled and Gaijin as an entity on the positive side of things, a realistic side of things, and a side that helps people, whether they're day one in Japan or a long, long, long timer in Japan, to be a little bit better than it was before they engaged whatever content I'm doing audio or in written form or even the rare video. But it got me thinking, I was at a cooking party recently and a couple foreigners were there. We had met, they've been here a couple of years and I struck up a conversation or rather tried to about studying Japanese. It was a Japanese related kind of event people who study and volunteer their time to help foreigners learn Japanese. And I inquired to the level of Japanese, what they were doing to study, if they had taken the JLPT, which is the test that many foreigners here take to evaluate and get certification for Japanese ability. And I just felt like, especially one of them didn't really engage me, and maybe they just didn't have interest in talking to me. People get tired, it's the end of the year, I get it, but I felt like I had reached out in a sincere way. A little effort wouldn't have killed somebody for what was basically an hour-long event, but I don't know. But it happened to me on the train the other day. A foreigner walked in. I kind of nodded, and they kind of dismissed me. And I don't really engage that and be bothered with that. 
they turned around and basically ignored me. And a few minutes later, they were asking people for directions on the train. And my stop came and I got out and I nodded again without a word. And I know that train line well, better than most Japanese people, I assume. So, you know, be careful the bridges that you burn. As they say, it's amazing how many of them you have to cross back over. But as I wrote on my blog this week, when you burn a bridge with me, I don't unburn it, as it were. So Godspeed to wherever that rather rude foreigner ended up. God bless him. And I was at the ticket gate of another train station the other day, and a younger looking female foreigner standing there, clearly annoyed with whatever was going on in her life. I nodded. I might have even taken a step over towards her to offer some help, right? I've been here a long time. I tried not to hang people out to dry. It can be a tough place when something goes wrong. Japan is great when everything goes right. You put your ticket in, you go, and your train's on time, and your hotel and whatnot. It's pretty easy. It's the moments when things don't go well that Japanese becomes really, really necessary. But she gave me a look like, back the mm off. And I walked on and went about my day. And again, as I said in the first instance, and the second one, Godspeed, good luck to you, sister. But I know even within my company, we get foreigners who work and they come and they go. And some of them have, over the years have been very sociable and very friendly and, and chatty. And some of them have not been to the point where you're wondering how they manage to live in Japan and survive and how they manage to teach classes and talk to people. I mean, basic human relations. And I don't mean to throw any old or former coworker or even current coworkers under the bus, but it always strikes me that people should just be naturally more friendly and open, especially with other foreigners, just for appearance sake. But many foreigners aren't. And again, you know, you, the social media is full of snippy foreigners with attitude problems who troll people and go at other people's beliefs and opinions. And while everybody's entitled to their opinion, as they say, there might be a time and place for that. And I don't know that when somebody is asking a legitimate question or questioning something about Japan or life in Japan or trying to figure out their life if being snippy and basically bordering on jerk is very good. So I try not to do that. I'm sure I've been guilty of that. I know surprisingly to many people, there have been a couple foreigners who didn't appreciate my thought and comment and they went their way and I went mine. I just didn't think that people should do certain things and they chose to do it anyway. And again, you know, not everybody's going to agree. I'm not saying everybody's got to sit around the fire singing Kumbaya. But people can be civil, right? Especially when you live in a fishbowl like Japan. But I know in talking to my friends who come back to Japan, and I know family who talks to me, they feel I've changed as they talk to me and converse with me. And I never quite feel like I have changed. But then I realized that it would be impossible not to change. And sometimes that puts a wedge or some schism between my old friends in America and me here and my family and me here. And recently it's even put a divide inside myself as I question what direction my life is going and in what direction I want to take my life. And I came home the other day and I was talking to my lovely, lovely wife and I said, you know, sometimes I just want to quit my job. And she said, okay. But she knows that I'm never going to do that. So it's easy to say. 
But within me, I wonder why am I continuing to work for that company? And I work, as I've said, for a very, very good company. And it's not even the job. It's not the company. It's just the fact that I've done it for like seven, almost eight years now. And to some degree, it all just gets old. The company has changed a bit. Some for the better, some for the worse. The students have changed. Some for the better, some for the worse. The coworkers have changed. Some for the better, some for the worse. And I've changed. Some for the better, and some for the worse. And I've gotten older, and that's definitely for the worse. <laughs> so there's that. And again, I, I find myself like coming and going, almost meeting myself when I go to work some days. And when I'm sitting at work, I was going through paperwork and, and, and doing things, and there was an issue with student. And in the old days, I had a lot more patience for that. I'm like, why would you do that? You know, and, and now I'm like, now it's all about keeping people coming and don't let them quit. And it's, it's less about teaching, which is the part I enjoy. And I joke with people, I don't really like children. And that's kind of true. But it's not really, I don't like children. I don't like bad children. I like students who are hardworking. I like students who try hard. I like students who sit and pay attention. And of course, that's most every teacher, right? Nobody likes the active, super ginky, run you over kind of kids. And in the old days, I felt like I got a lot more company support and I got a lot more parent support. And, and suddenly it's like me fighting the company's view of what I should be doing and me fighting parents who think their kids are, you know, super geniuses when the reality is they're average kids who should really, 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 really put the nose to the grindstone, as they say, and study hard. And it's hard for me, too, because I was that kind of student. I was a really, 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 there aren't enough reallys. And it seems like a humble brag, but it's really true. I tried hard in school. I wanted to learn. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to excel in my life. And I was watching this video and I read some other things on Twitter about, you know, the decade is coming up and it's ending here as we approach 2020. And people were talking about, what have you done in the last 10 years? And I never really thought about it. And I wrote something today to my private Facebook pals about that you know, 10 things that I had done in the last decade. And I did that more because after I thought about the last decade, I was a little disappointed in the last 10 years. I've had a lot of joy, a lot of big events, marriage and family came in the last decade. I was employed. I got a house. I enjoyed Japan, had a lot of fun travel, good, good times, good friends, good family, good food. And I enjoyed my life. But also, I got older, which was hard for me to accept, and my health got worse, especially in the last year, which I didn't take very well. And I'm sure that it affects my outlook and mood and perspective on life. Perhaps that's why I do more writing and social media, even to this day, is simply to keep my spirits up and when I look back and I read something that I wrote or I was thinking about, especially on Facebook, I go every day to read through my memories to remind me of days when life was perhaps not so good and now it's okay. And I also am reminded of the great, great, great moments that I've been fortunate to have in my time in Japan. And I've had Facebook about 12 years, 13, um, gosh, about 12 or 13 years. And of course, that covers basically my entire married life in Japan and most of my time in Japan. So I'm able to see a steady progression from younger single guy to married family man who's a lot more gray, grizzled, and gaijin as we approach 2020. And I'm sure that affects other foreigners. When you stay, the people who are new and they're coming, they're younger and they have a lot more energy and they have a little rose-colored glasses in many cases. And I think sometimes when you stay a little longer, it's pretty easy to get almost a negative opinion of Japan. 
and I try not to have a negative opinion of Japan, but the reality is Japan has issues with incorporating foreigners smoothly, and it also, to be honest, has a lot of trouble incorporating women into the workplaces. And more and more, as the population gets older, there's a rift between the old people and the young people. And I see a lot more anger and angst among people. There's a lot about the driving, and I was commenting the other day about how I was almost hit by a car and I shouldn't get angry. My wife said I should wait until somebody obliterates me with a car before getting angry. I tend to get angry when it's close because I like breathing. But the car came and almost hit me, and I was like, hey, come on, get a brain. And there's this thing about old drivers cause a lot of accidents, and, and old drivers do a lot of things. But the average driver who runs me down is a middle-aged housewife in a hurry, or a middle-aged salaryman trying to get somewhere where he, he should be but isn't, and he's running late. And I get it, but when the red light shines and six cars go through it, and I'm in the crosswalk, I have issues with that. When I walk to my local station and I'm down the street and it clearly says stop and people are in the crosswalk and people are blowing through that with a bicycle, a scooter, a delivery truck and running me down with as much trouble as I have walking these days, it annoys me. And I'm sure my response to that isn't as friendly and positive as it might have been when I first came here. But I realized as the decade had unfolded that my life had actually remained very much the same. I had the same job basically, same wife, that's always good, and the same family, which is good most of the time. But I also realized that while I was spinning on the hamster wheel as I've written in other content, a lot of my friends had gone on to really great things some of them had left Japan and gotten PhDs and done other things. And a lot of my American friends had moved up in their companies and now have higher education positions and administration, making, of course, much more money with much more responsibility. And it got me. I did an event for a Japanese company a couple of weeks ago, and I was the leader and I've been the leader with other events in English. Craig Sensei, lead the event, you know, Onigai Shimas, as you do. And I've been very good at that. And it's not a leadership kind of thing. But for the first time, this was a Japanese related event. And I had to do it completely in Japanese. It so happened that I had more experience. And there were a lot of new staff for the day. And so that was great. But I also realized that for the last 10 years, I had been an English teacher and I had never moved up, only gotten older. The job was very much the same. And that's even true almost 15 years when I came here. And I don't know, I felt like for all the effort, for all the work, for all the energy that I put into my life, I should have gotten more results. And I've gotten tremendous results. In the last decade, I been able to travel. I took a vacation to Singapore. I took a fantastic vacation back to America. I've, I've done Tokyo and house tembos and eaten thousands of lovely dishes at home, buying great things and out in restaurants. And I've taught thousands of classes and I've met thousands of people. So there's a lot of positive. So I didn't really want to focus on the fact that perhaps my opinion of the last 10 years is that Craig didn't die. Craig worked a lot and Craig's life was very much the same. Because I know people in the last 10 years, not only in Japan, but also back in America, who died. I had classmates who died. I had classmates who got cancer. I had classmates who got really, really sick. Uh, classmates who lost jobs who lost family, who lost friends, and the last 10 years has not gone well for them, and they still struggle. So it's really, really selfish to say, wow, I didn't get the brass ring, my life sucks. I don't think I'm going to go that far. 
but I did expect more out of the last 10 years. I expected more out of myself. I, I gave a full, full, full effort. And in many cases, I benefited and my life is great. In other cases, I didn't quite find that magic secret, the magic ingredient to push my life up. And I'm disappointed in that. So as I look forward to 2020 and beyond, I hope that I can find more within me. I hope I can find more in Japan to make the connection between my reality and my dreams and my hopes and desires for the future and security for me and my wife and, and those I love to be more secure. But I don't think I'm alone in that even as a foreigner here. And I don't think I'm alone in that even as a Japanese person. And I don't think I'm alone in that as a human being in a Western world where it's go, 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 more, 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 more money, more time, more, more material things, more, more, more. And I find myself in the last 10 years, the more I've pulled myself away from dependency on such things, there has to be some place for material success in the world. And there is a ceiling when you're an English teacher who flips flashcards for a living. No matter how great you are, there's only X amount of hours that you can teach a day. There's only X amount of students and there's only X amount of yen that you can make. And I've been very, very fortunate to maximize that. But the ceiling compared to what I want to do with my life is pretty low. If that's you, don't give up hope. If you've looked at this decade and you feel a sense of regret, feel fortunate that hopefully with good health and good fortune, you're going to have another 10 years to really go at it. And I take solace in that, that 2020 to 2030 is another good 10-year block, another opportunity to build upon the good things in my life and an opportunity to continue to stretch my potential, use my talents, and hopefully reach more of my goals and dreams than I perhaps did in the last 10 years. Stay hopeful, stay positive, stay upbeat, and most of all, stay hardworking. That's it, and have a great, great day.